There comes a point for our kids who have dyslexia, especially if it is severe dyslexia, where we have to pivot from teaching to read to teaching to adapt. We need to focus more on providing those supports and those accommodations that are gonna help them function in life, in social skills, in job situations, and more. And that's what today's video is about. There are three primary areas where adaptions are typically needed. And the first would obviously be reading. Starting at a fairly young age, most people who find out that their children are dyslexic will start using audiobooks. And that is a huge resource I highly recommend that you take. Some of our personal favorites are Scribd and Audible, but of course you can use your local library as well. But there are a few other audiobook resources that you need to know about that are completely free for kids with dyslexia. One of them is Bookshare. You do have to upload proof of dyslexia, either an official dyslexia diagnosis, or if you have something like a tutor or a dyslexic screening, you can oftentimes upload that. This allows you to listen to hundreds of books, books that were never made into audiobooks. So they are more of a robotic voice. However, they are able to be listened to completely free. A similar program is called Reading Allies. Now this one is one where I believe there is a financial cost to it. It is only for those with dyslexia or with other special learning needs. However, it does not have the robotic voices and it has actual people reading it from my understanding. We also have found that finding textbooks for your kids on audiobooks Book is hugely helpful. For instance, this year, some of my older ones are going through Apologia's Anatomy and Physiology, and they are using the audiobook to go along with it. They are following along in the textbook as they listen, and then they have their journals that they are working in as well. But having that ability to take out all of those really big words and really complicated subjects so they can really focus in on what they're learning has been really helpful. But what about reading day-to-day -day things? Your child needs to fill out a form, or they need to answer questions that they've been assigned to in a classroom setting and co-op or another area. How can they read those things that may not be audiobook access? Well, there are many devices out there. There are things like C-Pins or the OrCam, which one day I hope to get for my son, but we currently are using Speechify. Speechify is a free app that you can use on any device and you can scan either digital things, like if you have PDFs, you can put them into the program or you can scan physical pages of things and it will read it aloud to you. Now the free version, again, uses a robotic voice for that. If that is too distracting for your kids, you can pay for a year subscription to the service and then you can pick all sorts of different ones. My son particularly loves the British narrator and that's what he loves to listen to all of his books in. This has allowed him to be able to easily participate in Bible studies, to be able to fill out some of those forms and do things like that where maybe the words are gonna be a little bit trickier or there's just a lot more text to get through. I appreciate the fact that with the Speechify app, it does highlight the words as it reads it aloud. So I require him to follow along because that's also going to help build his reading skills as well. The second area where adaptions are typically needed is with writing. So when it comes to writing, there's a couple different areas where we could use assistance. One is in note taking. So if your child is ever in a lecture style thing, this could be as easy as sermons on Sunday, Sunday school, co-op classes, maybe they're taking a class with another friend or family member. If there's going to be something where they need to take notes, I highly recommend you let them use a voice recorder. You can get a cheap one online on Amazon or you can use a free recording app on any device, even if it's not connected to a service, like an old phone that you have laying around, and you can let them record the lectures or the talks so they can go back over it. The second option that is also really beneficial is when possible, ask the teacher, whoever's presenting, to provide their slides ahead of time or afterwards, or their notes. This allows your child to be able to focus more on listening, knowing they'll be able to go back over that information later instead of trying to multitask listening and writing at the same time. Also with note taking, teaching your child how to take effective notes, how to use symbols and shorthands can also be very helpful and take out some of the stress of trying to do all the reading and spelling in one. We also love to use speak recognition software. So essentially these are speech to text programs. They are free and they are all over the place. They are built into Google Docs, into many Apple products or to Microsoft Word. They have little microphones you can click and your child is able to speak to text. They can write their papers 
totally by voice. Now, this does take a learning curve with your kids. So I highly recommend if you're considering using this, introducing this more in that middle school age, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, before they get into high school, because they are going to have to learn to voice command punctuation or things like indentations or paragraphs. These are things that really have to be taught and learned. So introduce these early enough that your child will be able to have mastered that skill by the time they get to high school and need it more. There are also many editing softwares. We currently use the free version of Grammarly. It has a lot of different options and it also has a paid version. It will go through and check for your punctuation, for your spelling. It will check for like clunky sentence structure and things like this. These are tools that adults are using in their job on an everyday basis. Taking advantage of this is not cheating. It is something that is a tool that is helping your child learn. There are still lots that they have to input themselves, but they are going to be able to have that little extra help in those areas that are a large challenge. The third area where you might need some help is in testing. Now, we don't all as homeschoolers do lots of testing. Some do more than others. Some states require standardized testing, but oftentimes as you're getting into the older ages, there is more need for testing even if it is just taking the SAT or the ACT for college entrances. And yes, your dyslexic child can go to college. If your state does require standardized testing, I do highly recommend going ahead and taking that level to get an official dyslexia diagnosis. Because as my child gets older, as they move into the workforce, as they potentially think about going to college, these are things where having that actual documentation can be very, very helpful. If you have a formal diagnosis of dyslexia, the Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits work from not making any kind of reasonable accommodations for your child. So having that written down on a piece of paper and being able to utilize it if needed, this really helpful, whether it's in college or in future careers. If you don't need it, you don't ever have to show anybody. But when possible, tests should be untimed or should have extended time. Also with this, in some situations, asking for accommodations like it to be read aloud can be helpful. If you like to do some kind of standardized testing, but your state doesn't require a specific one, I recommend checking out the California assessment test. This one is done online. They have a timed and an untimed version. And I believe from what I have heard, they even have an option where it can be read aloud to the student on the computer. Ultimately, it's about finding what the best fit for your child is in each of these situations. Some are going to need all of these accommodations and some may only need certain specific ones. If you want to see more of this, be sure to subscribe. I am going to be having a video similar to this for helping your children with ADHD, as well as one for auditory processing and hearing loss. So be sure to subscribe and we'll talk to you later. Bye.